In this video, I'm going to attempt to create my first OSX application through Cloud Code. It's a new experiment, but it's something I've been thinking about for quite a while. So I'm going to attempt to use Cloud Code in order to create my first application that I can run on my Mac. So here I've downloaded Xcode. I also have Visual Studio Code, which is the IDE I'm going to be using for this tutorial. So I'm giving Cursor a bit of a break since it's been crashing quite a bit lately. And I'm essentially going to use this instead of it. So I'm going to go back to the origins of where Cursor came from, essentially, as it is built on top of Visual Studio Code. So that's the plan with this. So it's my first time doing this. So I'm just going to try and see what happens here. I'm going to choose Mac OS, click next here. That's fine. Let's call this first OSX app. Hit next. Here I have a folder called GitHub. So I'm going to call this first OSX app. And let's create this. And let's see what happens here. Okay, so this seems to have created some files and folders right here. Cool. So what I'm thinking is that I will go here. I will start a new project. So let's see file. I'm guessing it could be the same as what we did in cursor. So if we go to GitHub and open this up, mm, that seems to have created a folder within a folder. Okay, so maybe we don't want that. All right, so that seems to have created some folder. So let's just be a bit more structured, I guess. Let's delete that. Okay, this is complaining. So let's close this close. That's fine. Let's start from the beginning, create a new project, Mac OS app, Let's go here. First OS sex app. That's fine. Let's go GitHub and let's create it within the root there. So now I'm thinking that this will, yeah, looks better. So there isn't that, those two layers right there. Cool. So let's try again with VS code. I'm going to control O, go to GitHub. Let's open this up. All right. I have Claude code installed. So I'm going to start my terminal here. So let's run Claude code in dangerous skip permissions. And I'm going to say, this is my first time creating a OSX application. So I will need your help in order to do this. In the code base, there are the base files and folders that Xcode has created for me. Are these the right files and can we build on top of them? Cool. So let's see what happens here with VS Code. I'll explore your code base to see what Xcode has generated for you. Great. So what I'm thinking in terms of the application is just a basic, maybe, I don't know, name, email, and a submit button that we send a webhook to, I don't know, something like NA10, for example. So over here, I'll just log in here and I'll just simply create a basic webhook that is listening for some information, just so we see that this is working as expected. So let's create a webhook. Let's go to allow multiple methods. Let's grab the production URL. And that is pretty much it. So this is live. Cool. So if we go to executions. This is now waiting or expecting messages coming in. These are the correct files. Xcode has generated the st standard Swift UI. Cool. This is solid. Awesome. What do you have? Absolutely. Cool. So I just want to build a simple, very, very simple, basic design, basic application that has a, and like a two input fields called name and email. There's a submit button. When the user presses the submit button, we need to run some basic checks to ensure that the email is actually a valid email, that the name is actually a string. And then upon hitting the submit button, and these checks completed, we send the information to the following N8 and webhook with a success message or a failure message. I'm going to paste in my hook right here as well. Refresh project. I need one piece of information. Yep, I'll provide it now. So I'll paste that in there. And the plan is that as soon as this works, I'll be building a few different tools that I will use for myself. So this wouldn't be something official that will go on the Play Store's more tools that I can run on my Mac, depending on whatever it is that I'm doing. Whereas before I was just building web applications and running a local server and essentially having to run that server on my computer. So this is exploring sort of a different territory. So here we have LSP plugin recommendation. LSP provides code intelligence, like go to definitions and they're checking. Uh, would you like to install this plugin? Not for now, never. I mean, yeah, let's install it, I guess. I need to enable network access and the entitlement files since your app needs to make HTTP request. Cool. I'm curious what this LSP, whatever that was, was. Anyway, 
Here's what I built. A form, validation, name must not be empty, email must match a valid email pattern. Great. On submit, send that. Great. To run, open this in Xcode. Press command R to build and run. All right. Cool. So I'm guessing here we have nice that showing right there. So it's at press command R. All right. Sweet. First, our sex application. So let's put in Kevin, put in my email here, hit submit. Nice. Form submitted. And yep, we got our webhook right here. Nice. With, yep, name and the email right there. Awesome. Let's double check whether the checking is working. Yep. And the reveal the email. Awesome. And if this was to be turned off, yep, server turned in error. Awesome. Turn that back on. Submit. Form submitted successfully. Awesome. So, yep, this is working as expected right here. So what I would love to do here is, I guess, learn how to, can I run this or have it be sort of like an executable, which is, I guess, a term coming from Windows, but let's go back to VS Code. This is great. Is it possible to have this be a standalone application similar to an executable on Windows? The equivalent of a Windows CXE is a .app bundle. Here's how to build your standalone application. In Xcode said the build through release mode. So go to product, scheme, edit scheme, product, scheme, edit. All right. Under run, change the build config from debug to, re to release. From debug to release. All right. Go to product. So go to product archive. Uh, okay. And here I have some building something. Wait for it to build. Export the app. Select your archive. I guess that's my archive. Click distribute app. Awesome. Choose copy app. Where is copy app? App store test. Is it custom? Okay, let's take a screenshot here. What do I choose here? What do I choose here? There's also a quick alternative apparently, which seems quite more straightforward. But let's see this. Choose direct distribution. All right, hit distribute. Got this. Must be rebuilt with support for the hardened runtime, whatever that means. Rebuild your archive and upload again. You need to enable. Da -da -da -da. If I run this using the quick alternative you gave me, will I still need to do the hardened runtime enablement? No, you won't need that. This is only needed for notarized distribution. Sounds formal. Okay, let's cancel this then. Let's, what did we do? Product, I think scheme. Was it scheme? I don't think it was. Let me see if we can, or if we need to revert to what we had before. Product scheme, edit, sch edit scheme, yeah, under run, choose from debug to release. Product scheme, edit scheme, let's go to debug, hit close, all right. Let's go to quick alternative, product, so press command B to build. Okay, build succeeded. Go to product, show build folder and finder, show build folder and finder, okay, cool. And then navigate to product debug or release, product debug, cool, I think I have that here. Europe is there, you can copy it anywhere. So is it just this right here? Let's see if I go to desktop, paste. All right, it's pretty straightforward. John, john at gmail.com, submit. And let's see if we get another nice, we got another execution here. All right, it's pretty straightforward. So just a quick final test here. Let's see if we wanted to, for example, um, let's see design. Let's go to I think it was this one. We wanted to make this a bit more beautiful. So let's click get code here. So what I want is, let me copy this. Let me go to VS code, paste that, and also paste the CSS here. And I'm not sure if this will translate through, but what I'm going to say is, what I would like is that when I hit the submit button, the animation that results when I when the code above is executed on a normal web application is shown in the app. Also, I would like to have it be so that the background is a bit more engaging, more polished based on the current screenshot. So what I'm going to do here, is just go to, let's see, let's go to Mobbin, uh, not this one actually, Dribble. And let's say that we want to do, I don't know, something along this style. So I'm going to copy the image, paste this in here, hit enter. So what I'm hoping is that, interesting how this opens up both of these here. So what I'm hoping is that the background changes, it becomes a bit more lively. We get the animation on the submit button in a way to 
figure out if it's as straightforward as or if that sort of code can be used for this sort of application. I'll create a policy design with an animated gradient border. What was that? Effect like the CSS card. Let me update the content view. Okay, let's see. Animated gradient button, polish background, styled form. Cool. Let's see if that's true. All right, sweet. So control B or command B. Then I think I went to show build folder and finder. Great products debug. All right, cool. So I copy this again. I will replace sweet. Does it still work? John, John at gmail.com. Submit looks good. And let's see if this, if I go to my NA10 here, if the execution comes through and it does. Awesome. John gmail.com. Awesome. So pretty straightforward so far. I love that it's that straightforward that cloud code can handle this right here. It created all the files and folders needed that we can start building on top of that quite, quite in a sort of straightforward fashion. I'll be doing a lot more of these videos when it comes to building web, web applications and OSX applications for personal use and potentially for different business use cases as well. So if you want to see those, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss future videos. And in the meantime, I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll speak to you soon.